and the, the chlorine while it does remove bacteria and other sort of unwelcome organisms uh, will also finally s sterilize the blood from people of people who drink it all the time um, and research has shown that 18 uh, percent percent of bladder cancers and nine percent of um, intestinal cancers have been caused by rectal cancers have been caused by the consumption of chlorinated water so when we drink chlorinated water we actually uh, harm our immune system and we drag it down to a level where it's more likely to fall the, the body is more likely to fall victim to disease uh, so there's a great there's it's very important um, to begin to Im employ systems or to convert existing systems into ways of water of moving water which follows the law of uh, governing the flow of water takes temperature into consideration takes the the alternating pulsating movement of water into consideration because this is a substance which is a living substance and it cannot impart life unless it is itself alive so as something alive we have to make sure that whatever system and whatever materials we choose to reticulate it allows water to breathe In 1938, in Nuremberg, Victor Schauberger re-examined Lord Kelvin's water drop experiment to determine the static charge in falling water. Uh, Victor wanted to demonstrate uh, that water does, in its falling, generate charges. This is a device. The arrangement of it was first um, designed by Lord Kelvin about 1880-85. Um, and he called it his influence machine because it uh, demonstrated the influences of fields. In this instance, static fields and positive and negative fields. Water is supplied through this vertical pipe here, splits, and then comes down, pointing downwards, and ends up with a a very, very fine, the finest hypodermic needle at the end, so that the water jet coming out of this is as fine a jet as you can get. Inside this cylinder is a cylinder of brass in order to collect the charge, which is falling from here. So this cylinder is coated on the outside with paraffin wax to isolate it so that the charge doesn't leak outwards from it. This is the same cylinder. And this diagonal here is a copper rod, which is attached to the brass here, and also attached to a strip of brass in the bottom of this receiving vessel. So the charge here is the same as the charge here. And when the water falls through, it generates either a positive or negative charge here, and the charge is reversed by the time it hits the bottom. And so a charge builds up here, let's say positive, and here negative. And according to Kelvin, <coughs> the build-up of the charge is unlimited. And over each of these, or between all this arrangement, you get a, a negative static field builds up on this side, and a positive static field builds up on this side, which can theoretically go to infinity. From each of these cylinders, there's a black cable, which is a high-tension cable. And these uh, can be used to bring the charged field to where you want to use it. For instance, on the neon tube. And on the electroscope. To demonstrate the charge in falling water, the charge is transferred to the inside of this, causing the foils of the electroscope to flap. There's a charge which is transferred inside without even me touching it. And if I touch it, then it's quite strong, and it'll go on flapping like this. And as Victor Schauberger said, very good quality water.
would cause this to flap 150 times before it ceased doing so. And the lower the quality of the water, the fewer times it would flap. A water molecule is a dipole molecule. That means it has a positive and negative charge at each end of the molecule. And when it falls, it generates a charge because it spins. And so it generates both an electric field and a magnetic field. And this is why with a fall distance of maybe two kilometers or a kilometer, uh, when rain falls onto the ground, it comes with an enormous charge in it. And this charge is imparted directly into the plant when uh, the rain hits the plant's leaves, which is why rainfall is much more productive than river irrigation water. These very small thin jets of water falling out of these hypodermic needles generates a charge. It's really a, a small thunderstorm, this machine, because it demonstrates that in the clouds, charges are generated by falling water, which eventually ends up in the discharge of lightning. So in the thunderstorm, very powerful positive and very powerful negative fields develop and they short circuit through a, a lightning strike. The water falling through here develops a charge and as like charge repel each other, then at the bottom this jet starts to spread out sideways and the water will actually start coming up again and then going down again. So in this movement you can begin to see why there are such strong up and down drafts in thunderstorms. And this of course is a very, very small scale and I have, using this device, generated a spark which will jump across a distance of two centimeters. Every millimeter jumped represents 2,000 volts. So the two centimeters that I achieved with this device represents 40,000 volt discharge. I can only say if you happen to hang on to it yourself, you really jump. There seemed to be a correlation between altitude and the length of the spark gap. There also may be other variables such as air humidity and air temperature as well. The idea is to create an implosive turbine where the water is moved from the outside inwards instead of the inside outwards, which is what's happening with all conventional propellers. Think in three dimensions in a very complex geometrical system which can't be described by the straight line, circle and point. 